Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to go through a magnetising guide for the Questorist class Imperial Knight. So we're going to be talking about the uh, the arm weapons and the carapace weapons. Uh, we'll also take a look at the little mini nipple gun that you can get as well that just fits underneath that top carapace. So let's get straight into the video. So the first thing we need to do is gather all the materials we need to make that uh, magnetising guide. So from the top left I've got some green stuff. Uh, just below that on the left hand side is some 8mm by 2mm magnets, a razor saw, a scalpel, some clippers, and then all the components for the actual knight kit, most of which are made up, especially all the weapons. Um, but uh, the pistons or the upper shoulder guards where these guys connect into I've left alone for now so that we can show exactly how each of these pieces are done. Now when obviously you're building knights always 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 build in sub assemblies so that you can uh, either do the magnetizing or just aim to paint them a lot easier. So with all our components ready to go how are we going to tackle this little mini dilemma of how to do the, uh, the magnetizing. So the first thing we look at is this uh, shoulder connector here. Now you only get uh, one each, well, one for the left and one for the right side here. So you can't reuse or play around with this piece. This piece is gonna be fixed and static and it fits onto the upper torso like that. Now I haven't glued any of this at this stage. This would just pop apart as you can see. But what we need to do is work on this little uh, upper shoulder mounting piece that normally when you build this knight, if you follow the instructions, will clip inside the actual weapon as you build it. Now we don't want to be able to do that because otherwise we cannot magnetize it. So normally that fits just like that inside the weapon with that little uh, lip and it would sit flush like that if you were to build it as per the instructions. Now for me that's not the best way of building it so we need to do a little bit of cutting. So the first thing we do is cut off that little uh, uh, ridge section itself and that's going to enable us to be able to line our magnets up. So just cutting that off and uh, we can uh, crack on. Now once that piece is removed, just take a scalpel blade and just smooth that off uh, because I can't cut straight. So just in case you have uh, not got a complete flush cut, all we're gonna do is just remove any of that excess plastic so it is a smooth, um, smooth piece of plastic. Next thing you wanna do then really is drill into this solid piece. So I'm gonna mark with the top of my scalpel where the middle of that is and then uh, we're going to drill that out so it's going to fit the magnet. So the magnets, as I said, are 8mm by 2mm. So I'm going to drill a set of pilot holes just to continually widen it. So I'm going to start off with like a 3mm drill bit and then just widen that out gradually until we get to 8mm. It does take a little bit of effort. This is the, probably the hardest little bit of the magnetizing guide, just drilling uh, that piece out. This is an 8mm drill bit. Uh, as you can see, that is going to take some time. So... I'll do that bit off camera. How you do that with a power drill or a Dremel or anything else that you've got, uh, it's up to you. I'm just going to widen it using uh, increasing uh, bit sizes. So these are the magnets. These are the 8mm by 2mm. And these fit perfectly into the actual weapons themselves. And that's the reason why I'm using it. You could probably get away with 8 by one as well. They're not that heavy. But 8, 8 by 2 gives a nice satisfactory uh, grip as you go through this. So just taking one of the weapons here then, so this has had nothing done other than being assembled and you can see there the 8mm by 2mm fits perfectly in that little hole. So what we need to do is also widen out that, uh, that receiving part also to 8mm by 2mm. Now if you play around with the Dominus class knight, that piece is actually in two halves and it's far easier to do. But with this, uh, this kit, it is a single solid piece of plastic. So once you've drilled it out and you've glued it in your magnet, this is what you end up with. Now I've, I've gap filled a little bit with some green stuff just around the edge, uh, just because I, I made a bit of a bodge um, as I was widening it out using scalpel blades and everything else, because it is a little bit of a pain in the backside. Uh, but once you're done, that's, uh, that's the, those are the two hardest pieces. So what we now need to do is fit the receiving magnets into our weapon. So I've got two different types here. I've got a shooty gun and I've got the big uh, uh, chainsaw job. And what I'm going to do is pack out some of that gap that you get in the uh, receiving arm there with some green stuff. 
and that would give the magnet something to sit on other than sort of the edges of the magnet meeting where the plastic is. And once we've done that, this is what we end up with. So those are the three weapons I've gone ahead and done. Obviously, you need to make sure your orientation of your magnets is consistent across any nights that you do. So if you have or plan to do this on others, always go back and test and make sure your magnets are the right polarity. I've, I've made a few mistakes in my time, trust me. Uh, but that's the reason we're using 8x2 because it does fit the weapons and just packing out that cavity with a bit of green stuff gives the magnet base something else to grip on. So as you can see, all of those weapons are now done from the uh, the, the gauntlet, the chainsaw, the battle cannon and the, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, the big, it's like an assault cannon thing, I've forgotten its name, that's how bad I am. So anyway, going back to uh, putting this all together then, so now we've got the magnet in that upper receiver, we can actually go ahead and glue the rest of that arm section together we don't need to play around with that anymore and while i remember the name it's an avenger gatling cannon that's the one but we can now go ahead and build the rest of those arms now this is a painted example uh, which i've already got so uh, this is exactly the same as i've just gone through but just my painted version and just to prove i've got the polarity right on all of my new weapons that i've magnetized just now with the brand new kit there's the uh, the big battle cannon goes on just like that And the uh, Avenger cannon goes on like that. Nice and simple. So if you are building multiple knights and you want to have all the different weapon options, make sure you get your polarity right and then you can interchange as you see fit. So just putting the, uh, the gauntlet back on there. The next weapons we need to look at then are the three optional carapace weapons. Now you do get a little nipple that fits into the receiver on the top of that uh, top carapace, but as you can see, you can't just click it in there and it will stay. It does just wobble around and eventually fall off, which is no good for your game. So we're going to magnetize these as well, give them a bit of additional stability. The magnets I'm going to use for this are 4mm by 2mm. So the first thing we need to do is cut off the uh, original nipple that you get and then drill out a nice 4mm hole, uh, to the, which will enable the magnet to then slot into place. Now there's two options with the actual carapace itself. You can either apply a disc magnet underneath or you can drill through and widen the little hole to four millimeters. Now I'm gonna actually widen the uh, the hole. So there's two options here, as, I can see, as you can see on the screen, the disc magnet underneath, which means you haven't got to do any additional drilling, but I'm not convinced on the, the grip that you'd get with that with the magnet. Um, so I'm gonna drill that hole out a little bit wider. I don't think it makes any difference to the aesthetics of the model if you don't run with any additional carapace weapons. So taking my model example, as you can see where I've drilled out the hole on this one previously, and there's no weapons on there, it makes no odds aesthetically to what that actually looks like, especially if you've got it painted black. Now, we obviously want to uh, make sure all of our magnets are interchangeable here, so if we've got multiple versions of these weapons, you can drop and change them across multiple, device, uh, multiple knights. And as you can see here, that magnet is far more secure than just using the little nipple. So how do we achieve that? So as you can see, I've just gone ahead and drilled out that four millimeter wide hole uh, on the top carapace and also on the base of this particular missile launcher and also the other two components. Now this is one of the ones I've painted up previously uh, and this is how I'm testing. I've got the orientation right on the magnet. So I've uh, lined it up on one of the existing missiles that I've got painted and I'm just gonna drop that magnet into that hole and glue it with some super glue. We're going to rinse and repeat that process with the other weapon systems. And as you can see now, I've got those little magnets just super glued in place on that one. And now with all of the weapons, with all of the magnets on, as you can see there, we can just interchange all of the magnets before we even get onto any painting. So with the uh, the Icarus cannon there, and then the two different types of uh, two different types of missile pod. There is an alternative to the missile pods again, and that is to magnetize the front um, missile plate itself, because otherwise the components are common. So you could go that route, but I've got enough pieces to play around to uh, individually magnetize. So going back to my painting example again here, you can see exactly how this works rather than just the gray plastic. We've got the two different types of missile launcher and the Icarus auto cannon, all fully interchangeable on a painted knight. And that covers the uh, the top carapace weapons. The next weapons we can look at then are these little uh, additional weapons. We get a melter gun and a heavy stubber. Now these, 
if you build it per the instructions you can't interchange them that's the same as uh, the arm weapons really so we need to be a little bit careful here now the key to here is you don't actually need to magnetize these at all so although you get two independent little y-shaped frames they actually just clip onto the side of the guns so uh, once you glue that y-shaped piece in play uh, once it fits into that little location there and there's a little um, C piece retainer that just fits over the top of that. Once that's all glued in place, you can just pop the uh, uh, auto cannon out for the melter gun without any issues. So that will just pop in and pop out, and you can just keep those without having to worry about any magnetizing whatsoever. So that keeps it nice and simple. So there we go, then, guys, with a little bit of cut, shut, green stuff, and magic magnets we can pretty much make every class of knight that you've got from that single kit. Um, so I hope you found this useful. Uh, I certainly did. Uh, if you've got any other advice, tips or tricks, uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. But if you did enjoy this video, uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I shall catch you guys on the next video.